Father, I stretch forth my hand toward our seed. I pray, Lord God, that everybody who sowed, that they will get a harvest 30, 60, and 100 fold. I pray, Lord God, that you will fund the work of the ministry. I bless you, Lord God, that we have a privilege and honor to give to you, Lord, for what you have given to us is something we can't even imagine. The presence and the glory of Jesus Christ in our lives is much more than anything that we have. We are able, Lord God, to give you all things because you gave us your best when you gave us your son. And we have life in his name. So, Father, bless everyone who gave, and I pray multiplication over the seed that was sown. In Jesus' name I pray today. Amen. Every day I know of his blessing. He's a strong and mighty God. Deliverer and healer. My redeemer, that's who he is. And I sing Jesus over my body, over my mind, over my soul. And I sing Jesus over my mind, over my body, over my soul. The way, the truth, the life, the God of refreshing. You are my peace, my joy in the midst of the storm. And I know that I know my God is gonna bless me. I get joy from the Lord in my heart every single day. Just say Jesus, I say Jesus, I say Jesus, I say Jesus, my Redeemer. His name is Jesus. I'm not gonna stay in the valley. I'm not gonna stay in the ground, no, no. For one day the trumpet will sound and everyone will hear his voice. And the dead will arise to our King. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. your 
presence today, this morning, Lord God. We know you are here. And that everything we need is inside of you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It is so funny that I really don't know how I'm going to open the service. And I thought, you know something, when I first started preaching, I thought I had to have everything written down and, and connotated correctly. But I begin to see that, that we serve a God who's alive. We serve a God who's alive and that when your ears are open, that the Holy Spirit can be begin to speak to you and begin to begin to speak through you things that you never thought about speaking about before. And one thing I always tell my wife when I'm at home, when I'm asleep, when we're uh, speaking, I, I told her one thing, if I could pray, I can preach. Because if I can pray, I can hear from God. If I can pray, I can humble myself and get on my knees and allow him to release revelation into me. We have come now to an area in the church where things are now cookie cuttered. They're cookie cuttered that, as I'm saying, they're, they're made in the same image. The, the church is not trying to hear the voice of God as much anymore, but the, the church just has a, a, a program that they must follow. Certain things they must preach and certain things they avoid because it may lead to less members coming because you're speaking the truth. When you speak the truth and when you release truth, sometimes it tickles people's ears. But the reality of it is that the truth sets us free. A truth overcomes bondage and overcomes fear. And this message is going to be in alignment with the message that Pastor Steve has been in a four-part series upon living in the spirit. And one of the things I've been getting to notice as a believer in Jesus Christ and as somebody who preaches and teaches the word of God, when I hear a message, the spirit of God begins to give me a message that correlates with that message. And it's more of a continuation. It's not something that's new. Because last week, Pastor was talking about living in the spirit. And we went into the three dimensions of the human being, that we have our soul, uh, which is our mind, will, and our emotions. We have our physical body, which is our flesh. And then we have our spirit. And that our spirit was initially created without sin. We were made in the image of God, but when Adam fell and Eve fell, our soul, our, actually our spirit was no longer perfect. We were underneath the authority of sin. And the whole message he taught last week was about how do we have to live underneath our born-again spirit. Now that in our mind, that in our will, and not our emotions. When I was younger, growing up, I would always be very sensitive. And if you said different things to me, you know, I, I, would, be, I would get upset very quickly because I didn't realize I was touching my soulish realm. And, you know... The old saying before, they say, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words won't, words won't hurt you. That's not true. When people start speaking things over you, that's almost like a prophetic declaration of failure over your life. And you have to learn how to reject that. Because even when I grew up, I said, people will speak so many things from your life. You grew up in this area. Most of the people in this area, don't, they don't even finish high school. Why do you want to go to college? You grew up in this area. Most of the people here, you go into a different neighborhood because the, the, the Catholic schools are better, but they have a, a Catholic religion which you weren't part of. You're going uh, to live in this area over here, but you can't go farther outside of that, those, those, those square walls that are, that are around and, and surrounding you. You can't do it because this is what you were destined to be. But God showed me that when I put my faith in him, he would break walls. He would tear down strongholds. He would give you a new destiny that you never thought you would have before. That when you put your faith in God, there is no limit and there is no limitations. There's nothing that God cannot do in your life. There's nothing that God cannot do to make you overcome every obstacle and trial and storm. This morning I come here because I want to encourage you. And one thing I'm going to say publicly, I know it may uh, be all key, but I see Pastor Regina back there. I just want to give honor to her. 
because she's been a woman of God for so many years. I remember when I wasn't even, yes, amen. I want to clap for her. I remember when I first used to go to a life group, and in my church, we didn't really have any kind of life groups and, and studying the word one-on-one. -on -one. And I remember how she used to open her home. She would cook us a good meal, and we would come down, and we would study the word. And she has blessed me so much in my life to know that a, the woman of God and a woman of prayer, a woman who always intercedes for people when people can't see Sister Linda, she intercedes for people when people can't see her praying. And it's these prayer intercessors and, and warriors that upgird the church. It is the people who pray when nobody sees. It's the people who intercede when nobody sees that allows the church to be the church of Jesus Christ that it is. So the Lord began to, to show me, you know something? I'm going to call you to do something you think you, think you can't do. I'm going to call you to preach. And I begin to learn one thing. After all the years of, I've been preaching now, I started when I was a late age, 43. I'm 60 years old now, 17 years later. And I'm still able to preach the word of God because he has no short supply. He has no short supply. His word is not going to run out. He's not going to come to a point where he doesn't have something to say to you. I'm here to say this morning, sometimes the God, the Lord we serve will wake you up in the morning with a word. Sometimes you go to bed at night, he'll give you a word. And that word will be something that you never even realize will happen. We'll go through the, we'll go through the uh, whole entire week and we'll bless your life. And I even remember just a, a short thing that happened uh, to one of my coworkers. I'm not going to mention her name. She's a... a, a, a a good worker in our job, very conscientious, and she's dealing with a, with a health issue. I didn't know what that issue was, but on my way to work, over the George Washington Bridge with my 45 minute or one hour delay, <laughs> I pray. I pray a covering over the church. I pray a covering over the family. I pray a covering over our senior pastor, over his family, and I pray. And for some reason, the Lord brought this young woman up into my mind I began to pray for her and to pray for healing over her and she told me I want to talk to you later and uh, that confirms you know something you know something's going on but I thank God for the open doors because relationship is building just by being just by being just by being a fathers and mothers to people you know we can be a dad to somebody who's not our natural biological child we can be there for them when even them, their own biological fathers may not be there. We can be there to, to listen, to hear them, and just to, to love them and tell, tell them about the goodness of God. It's just, just simplicity, simple, simple things that go forth. But as I said, Pastor's message was living in the spirit. And as I heard that message, I began to meditate upon what's going to happen when I live in the spirit. The Lord told me that the joy of the Lord will be your strength. We're going to talk about joy this morning. We're going to talk about joy in the midst of the storm. We're going to talk about joy in the valley. We're going to talk about joy in the high place where God lifts you up. We're going to talk about a joy that sustains you no matter what the man may say, no matter what diagnosis the doctor may say you have, no matter how many years they say you have to live, God is on his throne. He is in control. You live every day of your life until it's time to go home. Don't believe in what the world says. We have a God who raises the dead. We have a God who heals the sick. We have a God who makes the blind see and the deaf hear. We have a God who works in Africa, in Indonesia, in Asia, in every nation, in every language, in every tongue. We have a God who's able to do miracles he's the same today yesterday and forever and don't let anybody tell you he's changed because he has not changed but the church has to change the church has to come underneath his leadership and underneath his authority and underneath his blessing so the Lord told me that the immediate things that happens when I live in the spirit I begin to live underneath joy did you know most of the world is trying to be happy happiness is what the world is going after 
And the Lord gave me a, a key point. He said that happiness is based upon my, ex my emotional state, my feelings in living under good circumstances. My emotional state, my feeling in living under good circumstances. So when things go good, I can be happy. The happiness appeals to my soul. But the Lord told me that joy is independent of circumstances. Joy is based upon the faithfulness of God to his word. Joy is based upon God's faithfulness to overcome the obstacles in your life that you face. Joy is knowing that when you wake up in the morning, you're a child of the king. You're a son of the king. You're a daughter of the king. You are a child of the king when you wake up in the mornings. You are not a pauper. You are not somebody who is low, but you are the, you are the child of the, you are the child of the God most high. You are the child who rose. You are the child of the God most high. Every morning as you wake up, you have an identity that's in Christ Jesus that is over your life. And I begin to look at the book of Philippians, and I begin to study about one of Paul's prison letters, and I came over this fact is that in the book of Philippians, over 16 times, Paul mentions the word joy. He is in prison. He is surrounded. He is in bondage. He's in shackles. But yet he has joy. Joy is independent of how we feel. <laughs> joy is independent of our circumstances no matter what we face. Joy comes from the God that we serve and his awesome and mighty power. Joy comes from us being in the midst of the storm and we know the rain cannot overcome us and pour down on us and prevent us from moving. Joy comes in the midst of suffering for doing that which is good. Joy is what God wants us to receive this morning, not to be underneath the burden and oppression of trying to make yourself happy. The world says if you have enough money, you're happy. If you have wealth, you're happy. If you have good friends around you that, are, that, are, that like you because of your money, you're happy. <laughs> if you have these things around you, you're happy. But happiness, happiness comes and goes based upon what you have. It's not based upon who you are. You're a son and daughter of God. You've been born again. You're not going to spend one single day in hell. Absent with the body, present with the Lord is reality. When we die, we don't die, we get promoted. <laughs> we go to a heavenly kingdom. <laughs> We go into heavenly realms. We go into life that is eternal. We go to serve a God who has loved us. We go to serve a God who is over, able to overcome every obstacle, every trial, every difficulty in your life. The God you serve is able to overcome them and to break them and to destroy them to allow you to live in peace and in freedom. He is the God of life, not the God of death. He is the God of protection. He is the God of healing. He is the God of wisdom. He is the God of righteousness. He is the God of joy. And he is the God of peace in your life this morning. This morning, know him. This morning, believe in him. This morning, trust in him. This morning, let his word create life in you. This morning, let his word create hope in you. This morning, let his word continue to grow in you that you may grow in the wisdom and knowledge of the kingdom of God. So joy comes from the Lord and him alone. We're going to believe, begin reading in Acts Chapter 16, beginning with verse 1. Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16, beginning with verse 1. And then he came to Derby and Lystra. And behold, a certain disciple was there named Timothy, the son of a certain Jewish woman who believed. But his father was Greek, and as he he was he was well spoken, but by who he was well spoken of by the brethren who were at Lystra in Iconium, and Paul wanted to have him go on with him, and he took him and circumcised him because of the Jews who were in the region, for they all knew that his father was Greek. The Lord showed me that right now. The church in America is so steeped in religion and religious philosophy, steeped in religious 
things, that external circumstances are more important than the internal presence of God in your heart. And he had to go do this. He had to circumcise Timothy to be in alignment with the law. I tell you this morning, you're not under law anymore. You're under grace. You're not under the law because Christ Jesus has fulfilled the law in us. You're under grace. And in verse 6, it says, now when they had gone through Pergia and the region of Galatia, they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. And after they came to Mysia, they tried to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit did not permit them. So passing by Mysia, they came down to Troyas, and a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia stood and pleaded with him, saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. And now after, after they had seen the vision immediately, we sought to go out to Macedonia, concluding the Lord called them, called us to preach to the gospel to them. Here to say that God works in the opposite direction of which we work in. You're calling a Jewish scholar, you're calling a man who has known the letter of the law, he's going to be, he's going to be uh, working with the Gentiles. And the Gentiles have no knowledge of the kingdom of God in this aspect. You call Peter to go work with a Gentile who's an un, un, uneducated fisherman. God does things in reverse sometimes. We can't rely upon a religious institution. We have to rely upon the word of God that is in us. A religious institution may have a religious philosophy that's connected to the world. The word of God is only going to be declaring what the word of God says truth about himself. And <clears throat> in verse number 12, and, and from there they went to Philippi, which is the former city of the part of Macedonia colony, and it was staying in that city for some days. I'm going to skip down to verse 16. It says, now it happened as, as we went to prayer that a certain slave girl possessed with a spirit of divination met us who brought her masters much profit by fortune telling. Warning you right now, no fortune telling, no tarot cards, nothing that is of the enemy that the church of God must not defile herself with things that come from this world that are of the other other spiritual perspective we do not come underneath the authority of the enemy we do not come underneath the authority of any principalities of power of darkness we declare right now the spirit of Jesus Christ has broken every oppression broken every depression broken every fear broken every bondage over everyone that the Lord God Almighty is over you not the enemy. The blood of Jesus Christ has washed you, has cleansed you, has made you whole. That over your family, I declare today a hedge of protection over your sons, over your daughters, over your grandsons, over your unborn children, over, over your unborn grandchildren. I declare a hedge of protection over the household and over the name that is over your house. And in verse number 18, it says, But Paul, greatly annoyed, turned and said to the Spirit, I command you, in the name of Jesus Christ, come out of her. And he came out that very hour. But when our master saw that their hope of profit was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to the authorities. And they brought them to the magistrates and said, these men being Jews exceedingly troubled our city and they teach customs which are not lawful for us being Romans to receive or to observe. Then the multitude rose up together against them and the magistrates tore off their clothes and commanded them to be beaten with rods. And when they had laid many stripes on them, they threw them into prison and commanded the jailer to keep them securely. And having received such a charge, he put them in the inner prison and fastened their feet in stocks. They are in prison. They are in horrific conditions. They are surrounded with people who don't know the Lord. They are surrounded with oppression and depression. They are surrounded with the enemy. 
but they know that the God that they serve is greater. <laughs> they know that the God they serve created the heavens and the earth. They know that the God they serve rose from the dead on the third day. That Jesus is not dead. He's alive today, this morning. I don't care how many people say that he's just a, a figure on a crucifix. He is the son of the living God and he rose from the dead on the third day with glory, with authority and power. He's the same yesterday, today and forever. He will always be the same. But in verse number 25, but at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. How can you pray and sing hymns to God? You're in jail. You're in prison. You're in horrible conditions. How can you be happy in that kind of condition? <laughs> How can you be, have peace in that kind of condition? How can you believe in that kind of condition that you're going to get out. But it says in this verse that they begin, they were praying and singing, they were, they were praying and singing hymns to God and the prisoners were listening to them. Do you know the people that you're around when you go through different, difficult circumstances, they are looking at you. They're looking at how you handle things that may seem to break everybody else, but it doesn't break you. <laughs> you see things that say, how could you have faith in God? What, you see the trials that are going through. What, what, what good is the God that you serve? You're going through trials and difficulties that, that it makes no sense. But as you go through the trials of God, if you know it begins to strengthen you in your inner man, it begins to allow you to move with a different strength than you never had before. And you begin to become stronger and stronger and wiser and wiser and wiser. And these men were in prison. They were singing. They were giving thanks to the Lord. And suddenly there was a great earthquake. So that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors opened and everyone's chains was loose. And the keeper of the prison awake from sleep and seeing the prison doors open, supposing that the prisoners had fled, Drew his sword and was about to kill himself because you know the, the penalty for letting the prisoner escape was execution. They figured, you know something, I might as well do this to myself now rather than let somebody else come and take my life. But Paul called out with a loud voice saying, do yourself no harm for we are here. Doors were open, but they stayed because they knew they had a mission. The doors are open for sometimes of our family members that don't know the Lord. The doors are open for our community, people who don't know the Lord. The doors are open for our co-workers that don't know the Lord. And I'm saying this morning that God wants to open those doors. We have to be willing to go through them. We have to be willing to go through them. We have to be willing to go through them because somebody went through that door for me. And that's almost 42 years later. Somebody went through that door and brought me the truth of the gospel. In verse number 29, and then he called. He called for a light and ran in and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas and he brought them out and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? The whole world is asking that question this morning. Can I do enough good works? Can I be a pillar in my community? Can I believe in a religious system no matter what? I can believe in Hinduism, Buddhism, believe in all kind of different religions in the world, or 10,000 different religions, and the only thing they say is just to be good. But it's not good enough to be good. We have to be made new. There has to be a newness of life. There has to be a transformation that the old man must die and the new man must live created in the image of Christ Jesus. Oh, Father, I pray over the American church this morning that she will wake up, that she won't let the enemy steal her glory, that she won't let the enemy take away the truth that Jesus Christ and him alone is salvation.
So he asked him, what can we do that we can be saved? And he said, we have to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you and your whole household will be saved. It was joy that allowed them to praise God in the midst of the storm. It was joy that allowed them to lift up the name of God in the midst of difficulties. It was joy that is independent of circumstances. What the Lord's beginning to show me in my life more and more doesn't matter what I feel in the natural. It matters who God says who I am. I may feel tired one day. I may feel weaker one day. But my God is on the throne. <laughs> I may feel one day that, you know, something I've been a believer for all these years and I see the culture around me beginning to decay and to crumble. I see the things of the world begin to enter into the church. I see the church beginning to take up the things of the world and the church becoming looking more like the world, not looking like the bride of Christ. I see things in this world coming forth that wants us to take allegiance to what the world wants to do, not take an allegiance to Christ. I'm here to say that joy is independent of your circumstances. Joy is independent of how you feel in your soulish realm. That joy comes from knowing your God and knowing his, his, cap his capacity and his ability. That joy is something that the world cannot steal from you. No matter where I am, no matter where I go, no matter how old I am, no matter how many years I live, even if I, I see myself also, I, I praise the Lord that I've had dreams and visions of myself and my hair was not even there anymore. I was just had white hair on top of my head, but I was still preaching. I was still teaching. I was still telling people about the kingdom of God. The fire of God was still in me. The anointing of God was still over me. And no matter how old I was, I didn't have a wheelchair. I didn't have a walker. I was still walking and preaching and teaching the word of God. Even in my later and later years, I was still declaring his glory and his presence. here to say that God has given you joy this morning because you know who you are and because you know who he is. And I all, always try to talk to the younger people because, you know something, this world is just trying to mix everything up. Everything's like a mixed bag. It's like, you know, good and evil, like the, the yin and the yang. is like they're, they're both mixed together. Not in God's world. And I pray for all the churches that have adulterated your word, Papa. There will be judgment that is coming. There will be judgment that comes over America as America begins to believe in American Christianity that says that we can do all we want to do and we can live with one foot in one, one side of the, of the world and one, sit in the other, one foot in the other side, that we can live lukewarm. But Lord God, you said those who are lukewarm, you will spew out of your mouth, Papa. So I pray for a church that is fire, that is fire, that is fire, that is, that is hot for the kingdom of God. It is hot and that is on fire for the things of your kingdom, on fire for the things of your of your, of your anointing on fire for the kingdom of God I pray to your the church in America return to our first love that is Christ Jesus that churches will be built not to be a monument to men but be to be the built to be able to release the glory of God and the kingdom of God of all the earth it is this joy that allows me to stand before you and to tell you that we serve a miracle working, wonderful God. I'm going to tell this story and my wife will be laughing at this, but she often has a lot of dreams and I was, you know, trying to figure out, you know, what, what, what does God want to say to me and preach to, what preached to me today? And when we first got married, and we lived in Jersey City, like I said, I was always reading the Bible. And a lot of times in her church, other churches, they said, no, something. there's a distinction between clergy and laity. Like the, the laity is, so, the, the laity are not supposed to read the word, that the clergy, they read the word and they tell the people what it means. 
But I went to a church that was a, a Bible-believing church, and it was a CMA church, and I read the very word on a daily basis. And my wife began to tell me, you know, I had a dream about you last night. I dreamed that you were still young and that you were still reading the word the way you used to always read the word when we were first got married. And God began to show her that if he listens, he opens his ears, I will speak through him. I will use him. I will use him. I will take his weakness and make it my strength. I will take his inability and I will make him strong. And I will use him to speak my word because the Lord was telling that I have been faithful. And because of my faithfulness that God is going to open more doors. Because of faithfulness that God is going to, to open more doors, even for this church, even for a pastor in his apostolic ministry, because he's been faithful. Because he's been faithful. Because he's decided to build, not the way men build upon having more numbers about teaching, teaching doctrine that's, that's contrary to the Bible. This church is going to grow. It's going to be many, 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 many different churches that this church plants. Because of his faithfulness to holding on to the truth of the word of God. I'd like to go over my last thing I'm going to lead to you is Galatians chapter 5, the fruit of the spirit. And that is as we live inside the, the presence of God, inside our born again spirit, there begins to be fruit that comes forth. You know, when I first became a believer, you, everybody in the world used to tell me, you know, something, you're giving up a lot of things. You know, you're not going to be able to watch this kind of show and not be able to go to this kind of place and this and that. But when I became a believer at 18 years old, I had the most beautiful time of my life that I've ever had. I had peace. There was no more of me fearing, no more of me thinking about what am I going to do with my life. I remember when I was an 18-year-old boy and I used to go down to uh, the old church. It was like 68th Street and 2nd Avenue in Alliance, the first original one. And I used to get up 7.30 in the morning, get dressed and take the bus, 2nd Avenue bus, and go down to the service and go to pre-morning prayer. And after that, I would stay for two services. And I was just being blessed by God. It just showed you that the things you give up to serve him, he's much better. <laughs> things that you give up and the things you no longer hold on to, He's much better. He's much better. Much better. So Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. It is joy, which we spoke of today, the joy of the Lord. It is peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, Gentleness, 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 and self-control. Against such things there is no law. We live according to his spirit. We live then according to his peace. And I've found that as I grow older, and God allows me to grow wiser. I remember when I was younger, you know, sometimes you try to figure out things in your own strength because you think you have a, the right plan. You think you have the right directions. But you end up making a mess. And God has shown me that when I surrender to him, things are seamless. He begins to put everything together. And I'm just so thankful just to, to share this message with you, to let you know that, you know, something... The world has nothing on us. You know, happiness is fleeting. You know, money could be here today and gone tomorrow. Material wealth is not bad. And it's, it depends upon whose hands it is. If, if you're a, a person who's a believer and wants to, to, to feed the hungry and to, 
to take care of the homeless. That, that, that money is used for a good cause, but, you know, you can't take anything with you. I know an old school preacher said, I never saw a casket pulling a hearse. That is, I never saw somebody taking their wealth with them to, to heaven or taking their wealth with them in the next life. The only thing we can do is invest. And what I mean invest, invest in people. Invest in the younger people who don't, who don't know, who are beginning their walk. Show them the love of God. Put your arm around them. Tell them that they're not alone. Let them know that the things they go through and the things they went through in their life when they were younger, we went through some of the same things. Because sometimes people are thinking, you know something, you're walking this way now, they think we were always perfect. Never perfect. This is what the perfect God that we serve that shines through us when we allow him to do the work and the will through us. So I just want you always just to be encouraged to know that, you know something, the joy you have is not based upon the things that you have. You could have money, you could have wealth, you could have prosperity. And I know so many people that were, that were so wealthy and had so many things, but they were unhappy because they didn't have joy. And that joy comes from the Lord. So I pray that as you hear this word, take it, hold on to it, and just know that, you know, you're the apple of God's eye. He loves you. Here to say that he loves you. Here to say that he loves you when you wake up in the morning. <laughs> he loves you when you go to bed at night. He loves you when you come to him the next day and you say, Papa, I'm coming to, coming to praise you for the, for the break of dawn. He loves you when we fall down. He picks us up. He loves us when we seem that we are flubbed and we've done the, the things, Lord God, that we weren't able, that we, that, that we couldn't, we could, we've done things that, that didn't come in alignment with our born-again spirit. But I thank you for the forgiveness of God that every day, every morning, his tender mercies are new. Because we live in a world that tries to make God so, so much of a dictator that he wants to, 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 to mold us into under his ironclad fist. But we have a, a king that has nail-scarred hands. A king that suffered and shed his blood on the cross. A king that 2,000 years ago came and took our iniquity and gave us his righteousness. That we have joy this morning because we have Jesus. And because we have Jesus, we have everything. In your name I pray, Father. Father, I just thank you for the word that you gave this morning. I thank you for... Lord Jesus Christ, your strength and your wisdom. I thank you, Lord God, you're continuing to build your body and to build your church. I just pray right now, Lord God, for a greater outpouring of the Holy Spirit over your body, Lord God. I just pray right now, Lord Jesus Christ, I just pray for the releasing of the Spirit of God over your, over, over, over your congregation, Papa. You know what your people need before they even ask for it. I pray, Father. I pray needs met. I pray, Lord Jesus Christ, any financial burdens. Oh, Baba Shanda, Dicitia, Balkoro, I declare in the name of Jesus Christ, those things gone. I pray right now in the Jesus Christ, the name of your name, Lord Jesus Christ, that every spirit of fear broken, gone on right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, every fear of lack broken right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray right now, Lord God, in the provision that is coming over your body, over your church. I pray right now, Lord Jesus Christ, you have opened the windows of heaven. You will pour a blessing out so great over your body that your body cannot contain it. I pray right now, Lord Jesus Christ, your anointing to overflow over your saints that they may know that they are sons and daughters of God. Never orphans, but sons and daughters, Papa. Father, I thank you for this word. Thank you for the truth that you spoke through me today. And I pray, Lord God, that this word will bless your people all throughout the week, that they may know that they are blessed and that the joy of the Lord is their strength. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.